Yes Shift here with another installment of Steven's Vinyl Adventures, but I'll also mention a bit of news related to the Yes Sphere at first. Um, and then I'll specifically uh, talk about my vinyl copies of Earthside's album, What the Truth Speak, and then Ruth Radelay's EP, The Other Side. So hence, this is titled Earthside and The Other Side, you know, Stephen's Vinyl Adventures. But yeah, I figured I'd also tie in uh, some of the yes and yes related news has come out uh, since we last broadcast. Uh, truth be told, I meant to go live much earlier in this week, but there's just been so much that I've needed to take care of, and I also needed to update some stuff on my computer. Uh, but I'm glad to be here now. And yeah, I'm just making sure that this is being broadcast well enough. Um, okay, it looks like it is. Um, sorry, I always have to do that because like you never know, and it's just me here. But yeah, me and dad will be live together again uh, Sunday, August 4th, noon Pacific, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, that'll be Dylan Howe's birthday, and dad and I will be talking about the Steve Howe Remedy live concert film, which features uh, not just Steve and Dylan, but also Virgil Howe. So that'll be really cool to talk about on that day but yeah let's go into some of the news here before i talk about my vinyl records uh so i'm sure that a bunch of you already know this but i'm reiterating it here anyway in case there's anyone who might not be in the know but over on rhino's online store there is a 50th anniversary pressing of Relayer. You know, Relayer turns 50 uh, this November, I think in late November, if I remember correctly, and it's supposed to be high fidelity. Um, I'll read the info in a moment. I'm just trying to pull up the image real quick. And let's, there we go. So you got, uh, you, you see how the packaging looks and such. Um, so I'll just stop sharing that and look at the info. Uh, so the details of this, uh, AAA cut from the original Stereo Master Tapes by Kevin Gray, pressed on 180 gram heavyweight vinyl at optimal heavyweight glossy gatefold jacket. Features an exclusive insert with notes by Sid Schwartz, limited and numbered to 5,000. Order now exclusively at rhino.com uh so uh the track listing is of course you know side one side two it's just gates of delirium and sound chaser and to be over uh same configuration and yeah i guess this high fidelity series is something that rhino does um and i've heard a couple thoughts on this release but i'd be curious to hear from any more of you out there who may have listened to this particular release already, you know, release, release. Oh wait, wrong album. <laughs> okay. So next up. Um, oh, so the other day in the mail, I received both of our copies of Stephen Lamb's yes. 90125 book. Uh, so you can get, get it from Sonic Bond Publishing. And it's looks like it's a quick read. I see that. Yeah, 78 numbered pages. And there are also photos in the middle. Uh, so really excited to get through this. And I'll give my dad his copy when I see him. And then we're actually going to have Stephen Lamb on our show on Saturday, August 17th. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, 5 p.m. UK time. And we'll talk with him about the book and the process of making it. So, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so recently, Asia completed their Heat of the Moment tour. 
and they've been sharing clips and whatnot from the tour and the other bands involved, you know, hanging out and whatnot and also playing music. Uh, so it looks like, you know, from the comments I've heard, uh, people have really enjoyed this tour. And, you know, I was really ho w hoping that, like, they could come to the West Coast. And, you know, when we had uh, Harry and oh, Harry Whitley and John Mitchell on our show uh, earlier this summer, they said that this is not just a one and done. So I look forward to whatever news may come about possibly a future tour. Maybe they'll come around here on the West Coast. And I'm sure there are other places that Asia hasn't been to in quite a while that people would love to see them at. So very curious to see how things turn out. Now, in the John and the Band Geeks sphere, they released a video of themselves performing the song True Messenger. And people have heard this song. Uh, there have been live clips from shows uh, earlier in the summer that have featured that song. So listening to it, I was like, okay, yeah, I remember the song from those clips. Um, believe it or not, I still need to listen to the, you know, the preview samples that I think are on Apple or whatever it's called. Um, I just haven't set aside the time yet because um, I've been so busy. But maybe part of me is also thinking maybe I should just wait until the full album comes out and be completely surprised. So I guess we'll see like what I end up doing. Uh, I see a comment over on Facebook. Tim Williamson says, hello from Bilaton, Virginia. All right. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited about the the John and the band geeks album true and also to be able to see them live uh, this month, me and dad are going to see them. So we'll have a lot to say about that after that happens. Uh, other things going on. Um, I saw that close to the yes, the, the Italy based one performed in Rome recently and they shared a clip of themselves playing. Does it really happen? It sounds really good. Uh, and close to the yes, the Texas-based one, of course, they have their event happening on August 24th, and they're going to be performing with the uh, Rush Tribute Band Clockwork Angels. You know, it's going to be a back-to-back -back sort of thing. Uh, you can find their Facebook event, and yeah, if you type in close to the yes, USA. Uh, so yeah, you got that to look forward to. Um, I saw that Awaken announced a couple of September dates, as well as one on October 25th, which would be John's birthday, funny enough. Um, so those would be in the New England area, if I remember correctly. And Total Mass Retain, they also have some autumn shows. Um, the upcoming leg, I think beginning on or around John Anderson's birthday, will be a John Anderson 80th birthday type set list. So I'm very curious to see what, you, you know, what that'll be. I'm sure, um, you know, that'll be talked about. And they also more recently announced the official details of an Alan White tribute concert. Uh, Tom Mastertain will be performing at the Royal Room in Seattle on August 16th. So I'm curious to hear how Alan White-centric that set list might be. They do get creative with the set lists. Now, regarding uh, the other uh, Yes drummer, one of the other Yes drummers, Bill Bruford, uh, he has a three CD set coming out in October, on October 4th, I believe. I'm just trying to share the image for that. Um, let me just make sure I have the correct thing pulled up. And like the cover of this feels very Earthworks. Um, I'm going to show it in a moment. It feels very Earthworks, but updated, if that makes sense. Like a bit more 3D. And yeah, there it is. Like you see the, it looks like a tree that's drumming on some other, um, you know, drums that kind of look like trees or some sort of plants as well. There's a bit of vegetation. Uh, in the sky, you can see 
a blue sky and some clouds, uh, stars maybe. Um, yeah, there's just something really magical about it. I, it looks really cool. Um, so let me just unshare this and I'll read the details. So this will be on Cherry Red Records. Uh, this is a uh, is titled Bill Bruford, the best of Bill Bruford, the Winterfold and Summerfold years. Um, and this has 35 tracks, three CDs, a uh, set reissue of two long out of print albums that together call the best of drummer composed band leader Bruford's recordings for the two labels. Um, so yeah, I'm just scrolling through the rest of this. Um, the package has been entirely redesigned by Bruford's longstanding associate designer photo photographer Dave McKean for release on Summerfold Records. The production was overseen personally by Bill Bruford. Compilation is the ideal beginner's guide for those who may know Bill's name but are as yet unfamiliar with the breadth and depth of his recorded catalog. And yeah, so three CDs. Like, yeah, this is exciting. Um, and yeah, Bill does have a wide breadth of work. Uh, when we talked about his other box set uh, two years ago, Making a Song and Dance, uh, and, you know, going through the tracks that are on there, it's, you know, you really see like how varied his career is. Like if all feels, it feels very him, but there are some differences in there. So it's really cool to check out his catalog beyond Yes. But also coming to Cherry Red Records. Um, well, first off, let me double check the release date for that Bill Bruford one. Um, let's see. Because I thought it was October 4th, but I also saw... Okay, that one is October 18th. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got release dates mixed up. Um, so the one coming October 4th is Rick Wakeman's Yes Sonata Final Edition. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show the image of that. Uh, let's see. Share screen. Um, and the cover of this feels very much like it's in the Yes universe, as we like to say here. Okay. Yeah, so it feels, it's very Roger Dean, you know, the lettering and his, you know, trees and creature. Um, it feels like something that would have been painted in the 70s, actually. It feels kind of different from some of the stuff you'd see from Roger Dean now but maybe that's kind of the point a kind of throwback to the 70s stuff since yes sonata has some of that and i love the darkness of the blue water here um and the land you got like a de it looks like a desert on one side and grass on the other side uh the tree kind of reminds me of the one on the tales from yesterday cover um so i'll go ahead and uh read the details on that uh, so new limited edition vinyl, a cut at Abbey Road Studios. Um, let's see. Um, in 2023, Rick wrote a new medley. So incorporated uh, bits of Yes Classics. And, you know, he's played those on tour. Um, let's see. Performed at his now legendary concert at the London Palladium. The new work proved so popular with fans and critics alike that he wrote another adaptation, this time for solo piano, entitled Yes Sonata, which he performed on his final one-man solo tour of North and South America earlier this year. The piece contains more than 30 musical fragments of Yes music that Rick was a part of. Again, it was so well received that it was decided to make it available on limited edition vinyl the pressing is likely to sell out quickly as it is bound to immediately become a collector's item. Yes, Sonata is backed by the King Arthur Piano Suite. Again, a piano adaptation of the main themes and melodies from Rick's The Myths and Legends of King Arthur and the Knights of Round Table. It will be instantly recognizable 
as a music that the BBC used to introduce its recent general election coverage. Oh, I didn't realize that happened. Uh, both tracks were recorded on Wakeman's favorite piano, a um, a Steinway uh, Model D concert grand owned by Andrew Giller, uh, the old granary in Suffolk. So side one is yes, and Otis. Side two has a King Arthur piano suite. So yeah, very exciting releases all around. And there's also something I saw on Burning Shed. And uh, apparently this features uh, Oliver Wakeman and Billy Sherwood. So this is from the Magical Project. Uh, that's the artist's name. And the release is titled 11th Hour. So let me go ahead and show the image of that. Um, let's see. 11th Hour. Two, two, two. And I like that Madrigal is in the name, you know, kind of reminds me of not just the Rush song Madrigal, but also the Yes song Madrigal, obviously. Okay, so here we go. It's got a face with, uh, you know, it looks like someone took uh, their own face off, so it looks like a mask. And inside the face is an hourglass. It feels kind of David Lynch to me in a way there's kind of similar visuals that happen in twin peaks the return but now for the details on that the brainchild of kevin dodson from cold progressive rock band madrigal the madrigal project seeks to breathe new life into the progressive rock genre with ambitious songwriting high production values and a stellar lineup of musicians the debut album 11th hour features adam holzman on keyboards, Oliver Wakeman on keyboards, Billy Sherwood on bass, and Jane Getter on guitar, all of whom bring their unique talents to the project. And it looks like there are nine different songs on this. And yeah, I'm very curious, like, how will this one sound? Because I'm not at all familiar with um, Kevin Dodson and all that, but I'm very familiar with Oliver and Billy's sounds, of course, but... This will be available November 10th. So yeah, great stuff. And I also saw a post from, I think it was last week, Oliver said he was working on arrangements for a new piece with Rodney Matthews. So yeah, exciting stuff all around. All right, so that's the news roundup. And now for the main, I guess you could say, double feature topic of this episode. Uh, so you may recall that back in February, uh, February 20th, actually, I went to go see Caligula's Horse, a uh, prog metal band from Australia. And in booking my ticket to see them, I, I sort of realized later, oh, they're performing back to back with another band called Earthside. And I wasn't so familiar with Earthside. So this concert was very much my introduction to Earthside. And I reviewed the concert way back then um wow almost six months ago um and at the time i uh, purchased the you know charcoal grace from caligula's horse and also let the truth speak from earthside and i was able to get the band members to sign it i'm pretty sure i've showed this before but i'll go ahead and show it again i'm gonna do a, i should probably move my mic um yeah, just got to move a couple other things so I can move my mic. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool album. It, it's heavy. So, you know, if you're feeling angsty, it can kind of battle the angst. Uh, really fulfills that type of feel. Um, and I've said before that the cover kind of reminds me of... Um, you know, because of all the grain and, you know, you also have the red hair. It very much reminds you of Poison Ivy, the DC villain. Um, so, yeah, it's Earthside, Let the Truth Speak. Um, and again, I feel like the camera that I have in my laptop doesn't really do the cover justice. Um, but, yeah, you also got the backside, which shows a lot of the 
featured artists on here. So I guess I could go ahead and read this. So side A, but what if we're wrong features sandbox percussion. Uh, we who lament features Katura. Um, interesting to have that song as a second track on here because it was the opening song for the concert that I saw them at. So I was very much used to thinking of that as the opening, but here it's like the second track. Um, then Tyranny uh, featuring Pritam Adhikari, or I guess also known as Arlon. Uh, side B has Pattern of Rebirth featuring AJ Channer from Fire from the Gods. Okay, so I guess Arlon might be like another group. Um, and then there's Watching the Earth Sink, which doesn't feature guests, but it's really cool. Like, this music is very epic. Um, I think I read somewhere that it's called uh, Cinematic Rock, and some of the stuff on here I could definitely imagine being set to a movie that takes place in a jungle. Maybe, maybe the grain on the cover helped put that image in my head, but I think also because of, like, some of the heaviness of it was sort of reminding me of those, like, sort of, um, you know, uh, sort of like a, you know, swinging around in the jungle type thing and exploring and stuff. And, it's, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Side C has The Lesser Evil featuring Larry Braggs and Sam Gendel. Uh, D Denial's Aria featuring Katura, Vike, and Duo Scorpio. Side D, Vespers, featuring Gennady Takachenko, Pies, and VK. And then Let the Truth Speak, the title track, features Daniel Tompkins of Tesseract and Gennady Takachenko, Pies. And All We Knew and Never Loved features Bard Kolstad of Leprous. And I've mentioned before in the concert review that uh, for certain moments that had like these guest vocalists um they would play uh their bit of the song on the screen and you could kind of see like a, the music video um yeah and you know the vocals uh, especially toward the end of the album are really beautiful it's incredible uh produced by earthside members jamie van Dyck, ben shanbrom and Frank Sacramon, uh, produced by Forrester Savelle, uh, plays bass. Greg Thomas, who does guitar and vocals at Silver Bullet Studios. David Castillo, who does guitars and synths at Ghost Ward. And Greg Pliska, uh, who's credited for the orchestra. And tracks one, three, four, and seven, mixed by Ben Gross at The Mix Room. Mix assistant Paul Pavel. Tracks two, five, six, and nine mixed by Forrester Savelle. Track eight mixed by Frank Sacramone and Jamie Van Dyke. And track 10 mixed by Randy Staub at the Warehouse Studio, mastered by Ted Jensen at Sterling Sound. And this doesn't come with um, a lyrics booklet, but it says here all lyrics and additional credits available in the digital CD booklet at earthside.com slash download. Um, I do kind of wish that th the physical like lyrics booklet were part of this. Um, it'd be funny if I just didn't notice it is in here and just found it now. But yeah, so I'll go ahead and show you the... So the records come in these black sleeves and both of them are red they kind of look like this um again like this kind of reminds me of candy like this type of red it's like you almost want to bite into it but obviously don't do that because you want to be able to listen to the records um yeah i quite like the you know green and red are complementary colors so of course those are going to go really well together um yeah, I'm just making sure I put this back in the sleeve carefully. Um, and then you got the other disc. Uh, this is a um, black sleeve as well. 
And you can see um, on the side where it has let the truth speak, you see the, yeah, the face and the shushing motion. Um, so yeah, it looks like trying to keep the truth very hush hush, you know? Um, yeah, I quite like the visuals on these. Um, the gatefold, it's called a gatefold, right? The thing that pulled out, it's, it has the, um, this nice, um, photo in the middle, which I'll show in a moment. Um, yeah, I'm just putting this back in its sleeve. Er, yeah, I get sleeve and, um, cause they're, they're the sleeves, the things that the, they get slide into but also the cover protector things i sort of get those words mixed up um yeah i guess you can tell i've only recently been starting actively listening to final right uh so in the inside you have the very classic photo of band and silhouette and you can see i guess that's a sunset behind them um so yeah it's a really nice package um wh when it comes to vinyl releases i do enjoy when there's you know a blurb that, or at least maybe a book at most that tells the story of the band or making the album um but overall like this is just so cool to look at and to listen to um you know, like, like I said, it's very modern, so it's kind of funny listening to it on a record player, but, like, it really feels epic. You feel the gravitas of this album when you put it on. So, yeah, I, I definitely recommend this as a listen. Um, and I, I think there's just one other Earthside album, but, but this is the only one I've listened to, so I really need to backtrack and listen to the other one um when I, I have you know i feel like i have to be in a, a certain mood when i go listen to certain albums or certain bands um because i have all this other stuff i do in my life so i feel like i gotta like be conscious about the time that i assign to listening to each of these so yeah that's let the truth speak by earthside um, and yeah, I definitely recommend it. And now to talk about the other side, this EP by Ruth Radelay, formerly of Chromatics. Uh, this is another wonderful cover. Uh, so you see her sitting in the car and on the back there's, uh, you can see the city in the background. Um, and yeah, the songs on here are Strangers, Sometimes, Crimes, uh, those are on side one. Side two has Be Careful and Youth. Let's see, produced by Philip Nikolic, recorded, mixed, and mastered by Philip Nikolic. Uh, is it Nikolic or Nikolic? I'm not really sure. Uh, lyrics written by Ruth Radelay, music written by Ruth Radelay and Flip Philip with the exception of Youth, which is just written by Ruth, uh, Distant Cowboy, and Michael Gold. Um, oh, okay, my bad. So Youth, written by Ruth Radelay, Distant Cowboy, and Michael Gold, okay. Vocals by Ruth Radelay, Cello on Stranger and Youth by Distant Cowboy. It's a very beautiful sounding cello. It, like, it's kind of haunting, but also, like, gets you in the feels, you know? Um, Piano on Youth by Michael Gold. Additional keyboards on Crimes and Be Careful by Ruth Radelay. All other instruments played by Philip Nikolic. Um, photography by uh, Jake Bottiglieri. Styling by Trudy Nelson. Hair by Sarah Dougherty. Uh, design by Ruth Radelay and Chris Kirk. And you also got, um, so this is um, 
what the uh, the thing carrying the record looks like. Uh, there's another there's another photo of her and standing by the car, or is she beside it or inside? Oh, it looks like she's inside it, but standing up. Um, oh, okay. I guess the door is open and she's standing next to the open door. But yeah, some real great photography used for this overall package. And on the back, see the lyrics to each of the songs. I remember... Um, Oh, I was going to say the talk album by Yes did that. But now that I remember, they didn't have the lyrics for the vinyl version, uh, but they had the essay on the back. Um, something I just remembered is um, I did sort of check the my original CD of talk and the newer one, and they do sound uh, very much the same. So I'm not really sure if there that there was like really any difference in like mixing and remastering and stuff but yeah it sounds like the same as back in the day so yeah um and i'll go ahead and show how the record itself looks and this one is green and and again it looks like candy to me like you can imagine that being lime and the earth side one being cherry uh, which is funny because Chromatics um, had a song called Cherry. So you would think it'd be the other way around, perhaps. But yeah, I really like how the green complements uh, the overall look of Ruth Radaway's EP photos. Um, I guess the green could also work for the Earthside album that I just showed. But yeah, listening to this again... Uh, the songs had actually been returning to my head in the days leading up to re-listening to this. Surprisingly, even um, um, Be Careful, which it was, I, I like the song, but I think musically it kind of felt like there wasn't as much going on as there was with the other songs, you know, sound-wise. But you know, it turns out the lyrics are very catchy. So they were like coming back to my head. And so I was uh, remembering that and um, sometimes and uh, crimes and like basically the whole EP, like all five of the songs. Uh, so I was very happy to be revisiting this music again. And it sort of helps with the, uh, angst but in a different way it's kind of you know it feels a bit more i don't know how to describe it. it's calmer but it helps with some healing and whatnot you know it kind of has that type of feel to it and it's very introspective and you know i just love this ep of uh, the other side and i'm looking forward to whatever more new music ruth radaway puts out so yeah, I highly recommend both of these. Um, and like I've said before, I saw her concert with uh, um, you know, Happy Sad Face and Starfucker as like three different uh, artists and great concert, loved her uh, set list. And um, yeah, I'm really for the new music. I'm glad to see that her solo career post chromatics is doing really well. And she's like putting out these songs. Um, but yeah, people can check out my review of that concert from, I think that was back on May the 4th. So if you scroll further into the yes shift feed, you're bound to find it. If you haven't listened to slash watched it already, um, but yeah, that's, I guess that's it for this episode of Steven's Vinyl Adventures. I feel like the segments on the news might have taken up a bit more time than actually talking about these two main featured uh, LPs or I, EP and LP or whatever, uh, these vinyl records. Uh, but I feel like, you know, I, I also talked about some other vinyl stuff like Relayer, Yesenada. So uh, I think it all balances out. But 
Yeah, thanks for tuning in. And like I said, Dad and I will be back on the show together Sunday, August 4th, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time to talk about Steve Howe Remedy Live. So uh, you can follow us at YesShift on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, if you go in a podcasting app and type YesShift, you'll probably find us. And you can write to us via yesshiftpodcast at gmail.com with any comments, feedback, suggestions, and what have you. So uh, thanks, everyone, and see you all soon.